press your damn cheek against Lemmy, okay? <laughs> what? Him? Hey, Nuggets. Welcome to the Food Truck. My name is Ruka. Today, we're going to be doing episode... What number are we on? Uh, I think we're at 11. I think it's 11, right? 11. Okay. So, anyway. So, last time in Disco Elysium, we found something quite interesting behind the the inn. A old pinball workshop, which was probably used as part of the scene of the crime and after presenting such evidence to titus hardy he became quite cooperative i'm actually was super surprised that that actually happened uh also guess what we found a badge <laughs> we finally found a badge and uh the car that we hmm, came in so that was fun but at least now we have uh, proper identification and we can we can continue. We can continue. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, not really nothing much to add other than that. So let's get going and uh, see where we end up today. Okay. So last time you may have uh, remember that I had issues with pop-ups and saving the game. I'm not exactly quite sure what that was about, but... Um, but at the end of the last playthrough, I couldn't save, so I had to, like, redo a lot of, uh, things that we already did. Pretty much almost the same thing. So, nothing changed as far as choices go, but I did notice one thing back in the end I want to check that I didn't notice the first time. So let's go back to the end really quick, and then we'll continue at the other side of the, the water lock here. All right, I didn't notice this earlier, but there are two what looks like to be RCM cops here. So let's uh, check them both out and see what they have to say. We'll start with you. The woman in an RCM patrol officer's uniform winces as she notices you. Oh, hey, she doesn't look like she, she doesn't look like she likes us. Also, horse face woman. What kind of um description is that? I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. She doesn't like us. Okay! As Lieutenant Kitsuragi explained, a patrol officer is the lowest rank in the RCM, below Lieutenant and Sergeant. Hold on. You're a patrol officer for the, of the RCM? I'm in a murder investigation. Are you the Calvary? Is everything alright? Why don't you want to talk to me? <laughs> Proceed. Fine, I'm leaving. Are you a patrol officer? Yes, I am. I'm a cop, too. She knows. Uh, I'm on a murder investigation. Are you the cavalry? I'm definitely not the cavalry. Is everything all right? Why don't you want to talk to me? I don't know. I mean, uh, why would I want to talk to you? Okay. She avoids your gaze. Uh, have I wronged you? I've done that to a lot of people. It's cool to see another cop. I thought came out the only ones. God, I don't know why. I'm just trying to do my best. Let's... Just do this by the book, okay? Why? I bring word of the end to come. What is this? Uh, have I wronged you? I've done that to a lot of people. No, you haven't wronged me. It's okay. Okay, she shakes her hand and breathes out. Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? Hmm. What does one talk about with a fellow officer? Uh, so what precinct are you from? What precinct? <sighs> Fucking deranged lunatic. The sunglasses wearing man pushes through his teeth. Okay. You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Okay, goodbye. You're the police, right? Yeah, I don't think we need to point that out. We know. You look like shit. Man with sunglasses. This face also looks kind of familiar. Are you... John? Why does your hair look different? Is that a wig? <laughs> your ruffled face reflects in the man's sunglasses. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. You look like shit. Uh, I don't look like shit. I know, it's intentional. <laughs> the last couple days have been rough. Looks don't matter, it's one on the inside that does. I am never going to get this cave solved. Uh, I know, it's intentional. Uh, the last couple days have been rough. Oh, don't be so modest. We're looking at several months worth of damage here. Kind of a miracle you're still up and at it, to be honest. Oh, I just realized that uh, he stood up. 
Oh, come on, John. It looks like it's been a rough week on him. It is, John. It's not just this week. What do you want? Uh, I'm wondering what you're doing here. Why are you here, undercover? Kind of, sort of not. There's something about this guy that matches with a face in your head. A similar, but different face. He might be wearing a disguise. It is a disguise. Cool shades. Are you wearing a disguise, Kim? Who is this guy? Esprit de corpse. Call your station. <laughs> Something strange about this guy. Figure it out. I got some questions for you. I'm a cop. Cool shades. Are you wearing a disguise? Kim, who is this guy? Okay, see you around. Hold up, hold up. Watch out for yourself, loser. That voice. So very familiar. Did you hear it when calling to your station and reporting your badge missing? Wait, your voice, I recognize it. Oh, really? I wonder where. I lost my badge recently when I called in to report it missing. You were there. I also have my badge back, by the way. That's the where you remember me from? Yes, I haven't seen you before. Maybe. Kim, I'm a bit of, um... I have a bit of a memory trouble. You don't say. Goodbye, then. The voice thing was a coincidence. Run along, asshole. Asshole? What'd I do to you? Hold up, I'm gonna... Let's see... Esprit de corpse. I guess we may as well do the full... Ensemble, if we can. Okay, I can wear one jacket, that's fine. Visual calculus... Shivers... I only got one thing for Esprit, but I should be good enough. Again? I can't believe this shit. He might be wearing a disguise. <sighs> Call the station, just check it out. You know mm. what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Tell me the truth, you know me from somewhere. Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Another life. From where? From another life? Yes, from another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a <laughs> police officer belonging to the ranks of the... He pauses. To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? 41st. 69! <laughs> 999? Never mind the stupid 41st. Okay, okay. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. He gives you a long, meaningful look and adds... Somewhere good. Let's talk about more about the hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Cool shades, are you wearing a disguise? Let's, yeah. Let's talk about 41. Okay. Uh, oh, the hypothetical 41. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. He blinks aggressively. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. So what would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Do you have a crime to solve? Who else is in our imaginary police station? Can't imagine anymore. What would our relationship be? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? Partners? Okay, so you're not my superior. You're my partner. Okay, you seem like a cool guy. I'd love, I'd love to have you as my partner. You seem a bit of a drag. No offense, but I could do better. Kim's cooler than you. Kim's cooler than you. <laughs> I'm sure he's fucking flattered, but Kim is not part of his thought experiment. In this one, we are partners. Okay. The lieutenant is silent. Ah. <sighs> Seemed like a bit of a drag, no offense, but I could do better. None taken, my friend. None taken. Let's be honest. There's been some purely fictional talk in our imaginary station in regards of who'd even be worthy of your partnership. Ooh, what happened exactly? And the conclusion is that a man with your caliber should form his own one-man policing unit. Anyone else would just slow you down. He nods eagerly along. All right. Do you have a crime to solve? Oh, no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other <laughs> better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing you work. This isn't helping. She says, shaking her head and looking at the man with sunglasses dis disapprovingly. Who else is in our imagining police station? You're not going to believe this, but... Police officers. Okay, so you're saying I'm not one. Yes, sir. Solving crimes, locking up bad guys, and... And get this. 
and not getting that drink on at two o'clock. Yeah, problem. Just some regular boring motherfuckers <laughs> in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far out son of Lang. So who is the far out son of Lang? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Want to tell me more about him or her? Not even a little bit. Mm. It's an urban myth about an officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. As I say, it's just an urban myth. You are not the son of Lang. Okay, yes, you get the joke. <laughs> Leave it at that. Okay, I can't imagine anymore. <sighs> Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. <sighs> I got some questions for you. I'm a cop. About what? You don't look like a cop. You know what you look like. <laughs> uh, like a sack of shit. Uh, girl of the... I... I don't know. You tell me. Like a man down his luck? I'm trying real hard here, man. Oh, well, go solve your case then. That would count as trying hard. Ah, <sighs> okay. Well, now we answer some questions? No. He says calmly, then he just keeps staring at you. Don't you have to? Fine. Okay, fine. The man in sunglasses nods. Okay, see you around then. Okay, the man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? No, super weird. I guess it was kind of weird, yes. No, this whole interaction was perfectly normal. Frankly, I'm way past caring or wondering. Mm, I guess it was kind of weird, yeah. There's something missing here. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy, and you'll probably get laughed at, but still. I was thinking the same thing. I should just ask him if we're from the same station. Impossible. I don't want to waste my time. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Sure, same station. Yes, just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. Let's just try that one more time, see if something else shows up. Again? He might be wearing a disguise. Look, I just had to ask, are we from the same station? I'm going to say no, just to see what you'll say to that. What'd you say? Hmm... Yeah, probably not. I don't remember you from anywhere. God fucking shit. He pinches the root of his nose. Okay, I was clearly wrong. <laughs> he is a firefighter, male <laughs> nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind. Not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. Yeah, who is this guy? Mm -mm. I'm not getting involved in this. Okay, he knows. <laughs> he knows. Okay, so you're around. I'm not going to ask about the disguise. It's obvious he's wearing a disguise. And I'm... I mean, we already know he's John also. But... Why are you two here? Why are you two here? Okay, before we check the other side of the... Um, the water locker. There's something I want to check with... Joyce really quick about the pail. So the pail was mentioned uh, when we talked to Angus uh, last time. And I kind of just want to see if we get any information regarding that. Let's see what the pail actually is, if possible. And maybe there might be some significance to what Angus is saying. Where did she go? Went to the village on the coast, officer. See you there. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's huff it. Let's huff it. Okay, we're back here now. Um, I don't think there's anything on this side. Let's check around the the car really quick to see if there's anything else here I'm missing. I think I already got some cash last time. We also got the badge and some other stuff. What's this? Footprints in the snow. They lead away from the accident. Oh, that was me, wasn't it? Okay. So we can't do anything with that. What's this? Oh, a boat. A boat tucked away underneath a tarp. 
Huh. What is that? Oh, boxes. Bottle. Window. Just check really quick before we go in. Through the broken glass, dusty shelves and a forgotten chair. Alright. <coughs> what is inside? It is dark AF. Is this gonna help? You know, I don't think I've had to actually use the flashlight for anything. So I don't know how well this actually helps. It's just a chair. Oh, and a few other things. Dark red chair in a dim light of the room. Okay. What's this? Postcard, Coal City. And a bow knot. Where do I use this? Oh, I have a ne oh, oh, I ha oh, right, I forgot I have a, a tie, huh, drama or Inland Empire. Let's keep with the Inland Empire, I don't think drama needs any help right now. There's nothing here though. Whoa, 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 I thought, I thought, let's check the thought. Okay. Cold breeze is enough to make the wall planks creak. That was it. Okay, I am gonna... Wait. Authority. Why does the clipboard reduce authority? I don't... It doesn't make any sense. We could sell the canister later if we have to. I mean, what else is it good for except being sold? Okay, well, rain is heavy. Nothing else around here. Oh. The shot couldn't have come from here. The trees blocked the way. Good to know. Someone has left their music collection underneath the tarp. How do I get to it? Ah, stairs. Or wait, no. Is there a way? Can I go here? Oh, okay, so that's how you how you get there. Oh, that's a long way around. Well, hold up a sec. Someone has broken down the fence and barbed wire. Okay, let's not go there just yet. I have a bad feeling that something big is gonna happen. Or I may have to go there because it's my only option right now. Worth a shot. The swing is missing. No one's been here for a long time. Okay. Birds in the birch tree. Barely audible coos come from above. Oh, a tape. Smallest shirt and saint signs. Oh my gosh, we can do karaoke now. <laughs> Rust peels off the bent iron posts of the swing. The wind whistles through the skeleton of the small house behind you. There's desolation everywhere. What happened here? In this yard? The lieutenant looks at the small building. A flock of gray swallows takes off in the distance. He's assessing the situation. How long ago was it abandoned? Good question. Someone thought they could have a summer house in a block obscure. For mm. cheap. It didn't work out. They abandoned it about a decade ago. What's a block obscure? A black block. A part of the city left unrenovated after the war. Or one that has fallen to gang violence. Or has become inhospitable in some other way. I see. On aerial photos, block obscures look like dark squares. Hence their name. So this part of the coast is a block obscure? Practically, it's not an official term in any way, but look around. No sewage, broken power lines, crime, drunks. Life is tough in the blocks. It's no place to build a summer house. At least it left some old music behind. Yes, and you picked it up because you're a post-apocalyptic scavenger who collects trash and magnesium blisters. He gives you a weary smile. Hey, you know, whatever helps. It's not meant as nagging. Just an observation. We should move. 
I don't think our suspect is in this particular yard. No place to hide. And besides, it's too close to Martinez. Yeah, I mean, I j let's just see what we can find. Like money. 50 cents. What's this? More money. Amazing. I almost have my 20 real for the day. Glory says a graffito to the ghost of us. Bottles. I wonder how many bottles I have now. Uh, okay. I don't think there's anything else here. Pretty darn small. I guess the only thing to find was the... Uh, the tape. Alright. Where else? Okay, so we've been here. We went in there. Just follow the coast. The underside of the boat has recently been tarred. Okay. Quick travel unlocked, fisherman. Oh, we can, we have quick travel now. Who's this person? I guess we'll talk to you first before we do any other investigations. Ah, I see. We got residents here. Huh. I haven't seen the RCM around for ages. I'm guessing you're a woman. Hi, officer. Lillian, the net picker. A woman in the, a raincoat stands on the quay, considering an overturned boat. A sword in a scabbard hangs from her hip. Interesting setup. Also, you look very cool. Anything I can help you with? That depends. Where exactly are we? Where exactly are we? I have questions. The first is, what's your name? That depends. Where exactly are we? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Illicible. Uh, why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Mm. Has been since they built this place. The wind rattles her earrings, and she's got hook earrings too. Uh, for... I've got questions. First is, what's your name? The name is Lillian. People call me Net Picker. I think I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. Right. Uh, the, she gestures towards the fishnets. Indeed. You're always confused as to your whereabouts. I'm looking for someone. Maybe you can help? What do you do around here? Nice sword. Does it come with a story? Is that your boat? No, the one overturned. Okay. I'm looking for something. Maybe you can help. Let's see. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for a suspect who might have stayed in the neighborhood. I'm looking for a missing cryptozoologist. Let's tr do this one first. Uh, I don't think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? People who look for imaginary animals. People who look for animals who are hard to find. People who look for animals mainstream scientists deny. Uh, animals that are hard to find. Aha, like snowmen. Snowmen? I don't think I've heard about those. Two old guys have been wandering around here, nose in sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. Wait, the like? Where'd they go? The like? Right. Not only snowmen, also green men, monkey men, burning rhinos. You get the picture. Yeah, those sound fake. Oh, you're getting it. And it is gorgeous. Where'd they go? I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? She points north. I'm looking for a suspect who might have stayed in this neighborhood. Okay. When did this person stay here? Very recently, over the past few days. She might have arrived on Friday. Oh. I've been out on the sea for most of the past week. The weather's been good for fishing, so I usually start at four in the morning. She looks slightly disappointed, really. Yes, that's the optimal time. Got to make the most of the calm. I've been sleeping like a corpse after. The sea really takes its toll. Now I'm just waiting for the wind to settle to get out there again. Okay. Sorry I couldn't help you out. Maybe I can help you find someone else. A faint smile runs across her face. That's it. I'm look not looking for anyone else right now. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? Uh, let's see. What are you around here? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now I'm tarring a little skiff. Um, what else? I sell the fish to people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants. Authentic insulindian cuisine. Is that enough to make a living? 
Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. Hmm. Keep it professional, man. Don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. <laughs> I wasn't trying to. Interesting, what have you found? I never thought the sea brought in anything particularly interesting. Walk on the beach sounds romantic. Okay, maybe not that one. No, I think I get it. Let me ask you something else. Uh, interesting, what have you found? Wood. Pieces of glass. Every once in a while we see dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. A mine washed ashore once. A mine? Bottled, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. She looks at the beach. All right. Major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. <laughs> Game. Rhetoric. I, I like to ask questions. Okay, I need to know about those human bodies. A mine. RCM could use a mine. Where is it? Drugs. I need info on this. Major narc. Uh, point to yourself. This place looks bad. Why don't you leave? Uh, I need to know about those human bodies. Well, you're barking under the wrong tree then, officer. I have no interest in floaters. Seen enough of them in my life already. Very unattractive bunch. Okay, that's fair. Nice sword, though. Uh, does it come with a story? Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of story. <laughs> <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. All right. Uh, do you know how to use it? Not really. I know some basic moves, and I know it sure as hell beats a knife when you're in a tough spot. Fair enough. But not when you're in a tight spot. Uh, it is imposing. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. Why do you need intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. Fair enough. Uh... Why don't more- can I borrow that sword? She's not gonna give it up. Why don't more women arm themselves if it's so effective? So we're all the men- so where are all the men now? Yeah, why don't more women arm themselves? What makes you think we haven't? <laughs> the truth is that almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. I see. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. Well, when you see enough, I guess you don't. That does not go for real men. It does not go for you. Show her. Show her the wonder. The wonder? What's the wonder? Coach means the expression. Behold, point to the expression on your face. I'm a proper man, believe me. True, most people I met are scared. Behold. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to do anything. Okay. <laughs> well, she seems to like it. Her eyes meet yours and suddenly she starts laughing. It's hoarse. As if she hasn't laughed in a while. You like it? Find someone else to laugh. I'm not a clown. You like it? Sure. It looks as if you could face down any horror in the world with that same unchanging grin. It's like a shield. Yeah. The traces of her laughter are still there. In her eyes, fading fast. <sighs> I mean, that's pretty much what it is for Harry right now. Uh, so, where are all the men now? Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed. And one of them, I ended up marrying. Oh, okay. Wait, if they're thick-headed, where's your husband now? Gone. Gone where? Gone. Coward, I would never leave anyone. He disappears? Sounds like a missing persons case. Uh... Sounds like a missing persons case. It absolutely does not. <laughs> we are not going to look for him. Uh, sorry, Kim. I was just... Okay, fine. No, no. There's nothing to find. He's dead. Lost to the waves. Oh, that's bad. What happened? Oh, say no more. Wait for her to continue. He didn't respect the sea. Went mm. out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day, the boat was found floating empty. 
The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. I see. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. <laughs> There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. So... Wait, sinewy muscles? Does that mean he was really buff or not that buff? She really likes those muscles, though. It's in the way she pronounces sinewy. I see. Yeah, death is nothing. I shoot on death. No. You should have thrown yourself in the waves after him. Nope. Time really is the best cure for sorrow, isn't it? It's healthy to let go and move on. You gotta keep the wheels spinning. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bedsick with melancholy. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. That's fair. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. She glances at the village where the two little kids are playing in what look like rocks. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. Yeah. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another, better, drunk. Ask her. Both of you could need some action. That's not exactly something I should be asking, nor is it a priority. Kim's present make it awkward. Don't know a good spot yet. Explore the coast. Are we really going to pick this lady up? No, we shouldn't. Uh, is that your skiff, the overturned boat? Sure is. The sun, I call her. Coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. Oh, okay. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. Sunny days. Um, it's raining right now. Hi. Sunny days. You got a problem with that? No. No, ma'am. We have no quarrel with sunny days. Good. It would have been bad news had it turned out it wasn't a sunny day. Bad news for the skiff. Bad news for the nets. Bad news for the kids. There's a moment's silence. She looks at the rain streaming down the yellow belly of the boat. When do you think it'll be ready? There's something we might have to check out on the islands. Uh, the origin of a shot. Mm, I want to ask something else. When do you think it'll be ready? Shot, huh? The boat will be ready when the sea turns and the winds settle. You can't command the weather, officer. Okay. Waves wash the sand. A skiff moves across the mirror's smooth sea, far away from here. A lone passenger, a fast sloop in the distance, white sails. My prediction, it will be at least two days. Two days is a good estimate, thank you. All right, we'll be seeing you. It was here. What are these doing in the fish? Boots! Wait, what do my shoes do? Composure and minus one Savo fear. I think composure is good. Perception, though, might be better. Perception. Composure. Nah, let's keep our composure. Let's keep our composure. This float is floating freely in the water, unmoored. Oh, what's in that bucket? More bottles. I'll take that, thank you. Money. I thought. The plants creak beneath your weight. Is this another lady? Oh, there's fish down here. The ladder leads to a school of fish swimming in the kelp. I'll just keep the core oh. of H.E. in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. Oh, I didn't recognize you, Joyce. I didn't realize you wore a bun. Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to a pier any day. Jet, jet, jetty. Hello, ma'am. Hello, detectives. She fastens the end of the line around the post and strains her back. It's good to see you here. I only just arrived myself. What brings you here, madame? Yeah, why here? Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now, so I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. Hmm. That. And she's also keeping an eye on you. Ah. <sighs> so, how do you like it here? Hmm. How do I like it? She casts her gaze towards the village. Slush melting on the cinder blocks. Construction work left half finished ten years ago. Water drips down eaves of Etonite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune. 
the smell of salt and dog shit in the background. I see. It's pornographically poor. The street <laughs> has no name. All the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? Yes. I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Okay. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull grey metal rests in her scabbard. A sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Fortunately for you, madame, the RCM is on the scene. All right. Politics time. Let's react. You're right to be scared. This is all your fault. There is no danger. The working class have no idea what's happening to them. Try not to be scared. This is just how the real city looks. The place is doomed either way. Uh, this is just how the real city looks. I don't know. It's just a fishing village. Say nothing. I got nothing to say. She could easily just... She leans against the railing, looking at the grey sky. Above you, there forms a quilt of alto-cumulus clouds, twisting into each other. The wind tugs and stretches them over the bay. Their cloud shadows slide over the ruins of Revachol West. Wherever they pass, the temperature drops slightly, but perceptibly. Have I told you how they discovered this place? The wind picks up, her wrinkled flaps in the gust. The... fishing village? The is this island? No, the Insul Indian, Isola. What is an Isola exactly? I'm guessing you don't know then. No, you haven't told me how they found it. Well, your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. 50 years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. Oblivion, that's so me. 45% is around where I operate. Things are getting better, though. Uh, things are getting better, though. I knew you would sympathize. Most Revacholians will never know what this place means. Our home. This island of matter. Or why they were ferried over in the first place. Remind me to tell you one day. For now, how can I assist you in this new location? She corrects the scarf around her neck. Uh, tell me now, we have time. Tell me something else. Well, it was good running into you. Well, tell me something else. Of course. I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. How can I help you at this juncture? I found my badge. I love you did. She inspects a piece of blue plastic, her eye scanning from left to right. Fast, observantly, like an electronic printer. She is memorizing your badge number. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant W. Freighter Dubois. I am glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. What can I help you with, Lieutenant Ya Freighter? Uh, something about reality. More lessons in basic reality? Let's My see. favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. Wait, what is this? Breed the corpse. Why is this locked? Oh. Hmm. Volition, this thing? No, I can't. I, I think I need an extra point in volition and spree the corpse. That's probably why, huh? Uh, I guess let's Glad stop to have there. Been for, a let's stop there for now. Let's stop there for now. Okay, well, no. You know what? Joyce, tell us about this area. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Uh, let's see. Reality, wild pines. Okay, I guess she's not selling us today. Never mind. Let's see what else is here. Barrel! With money. Nice. Uh, breaking and entering really quick, but first things first, what is inside? Can't see inside of the house. Let's see. It's locked tight. I'm guessing this is your house. Suliram, Suliram, Ram Ram. Hey, lady.
by our jockas. The woman next to a bucket of clothes hums an odd melody. Her eyes are closed. They look pretty open to me. You're not sure about the melody, but it might be Saf Samaran, possibly Sigean, also known as the Apricot Suzrinti. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. She opens her eyes. If you can't see, how did you know I was here? Well, she can hear. I still have a golden ear. <laughs> come, come. Uh, lean forward. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. A shadow passes over her face. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. What well, he said, we're cops. We don't cause trouble, we take care of trouble. We're cops, we're hellraisers, click, click, bang, bang. Uh, we take care of trouble. Oh, of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Wish you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. That makes sense. Wait, I've been here before? What kind of ill omen are we talking about? I am an ill omen, all right. Okay. I'm considered an ill omen. Why hasn't anyone told me about that? What kind of ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black hound. That's you, all right. A black hound licking your own heels. Wait, I've been here before? No, not you personally. I met the RCM. Some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another. Locked himself in that woodshed over there. Points to the building behind her. He was boarding. Needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him. and took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. She says it as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. Okay, if I'm considered an ill omen, why hasn't anyone told me that? Maybe they are afraid. Why? Because you're an ill omen. But you're still welcome here. As long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then. Because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. I see. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park the motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone. Searching for treasure. So are others. I see. Ah. Look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? She waves her hand. Have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around the coast? Nay, I haven't seen anyone lately. Okay, but do you know who I'm talking about? Let us know if that changes. We're looking for a fugitive. Uh, okay, but do you know who I'm talking about? This is my little cinder block town. I know what goes on around here. Okay. She's being evasive. She knows something. There was a murder in Martinez. She might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. Would you now? Hmm. I know how this world works. And it doesn't work when people tell on each other. You know, you know, you know something. We're here to help. There's like when that man locked himself in the woodshed. We just need to help her come out. This isn't about the union, you know. Uh, we don't have to worry about... You don't have to worry about retaliation. Uh, this isn't about the union. You don't have to worry about retaliation. Ah, I should have known. This is yet another union mess. I'm not afraid of them, you know. We are not in the habit of being afraid around here. Enough of this. She better start talking right now. God damn it, I know you know something. This is important. I see. You know something, but you decided not to tell us. Okay, but we'll be, back. we'll be back later if we find anything suspicious. Okay, you know something, but you decided not to tell us. There's not much to tell. People come and go. Now, was there something else? I see, ma'am. I hope you don't mind if we look around anyway. Ruby was here. You know it. Mm. Where could someone stay around here? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. <laughs> that said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shack. 
Her soapy thumb points to the building behind her. How much is it? I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. Wait, hold on. You're just giving it to me? I'm not sure it's appropriate for the RCM to free, uh, accept free accommodations. No, it, yes, it is. It is. There's this guy, Gart, who makes me give him money every night just so I don't die in the cold. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. She's being kind enough. I will take it. Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. A key appears from under her apron. She hands it to you. Well, if you are not in the hostel in the morning, I'll know where to find you. Here, in a shack. Uh, that would be hopefully just something I... Well, I mean, I could use that to save money. And we could use that money for some other stuff. What's in this fishing village? Just us. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. She sounds tired. This is pretty much a non-place. A gap. A blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. She grins. The place is so pornographically poor, it's not even funny. Uh... This place is pornographically poor. Why that choice of words? There's gotta be something here. Tell me. Who else lives in this village? Is there a way to make a little money around here? Alright, another topic. Uh, there's gotta be something else around here. Who else lives in this village? Well, there's Lillian and her kids. A few new folks live in the house to the east. Oh. But they are away right now. There's new people. And then there's the drugs. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. I met uh, Lillian already. Lillian is tough. She is. Tougher than the men here, at least. If it wasn't for her and the kids, this place wouldn't have a spark of life left. I haven't seen any drunks yet, though. Sooner or later, you'll see for yourself. Don't have to look long to find these guys. Okay. Uh, let's see. There's got to be something here. Over there, you can find more of the same. Sharks and trees growing wild. That's the pox. The pox. Between here and Jamrock, a dusty sea of old trees, all covered in industrial soot. Small houses under them. An overgrown park. The pox. What's that? An old military hospital and its surroundings. Or it used to be, during the time of the suzerain. She looks towards the building to the south. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell shock veterans and folks looking for some quiet in the old sanatorium gardens. I see. Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets and makeshift cinder block houses. Shacks as far as the eye can see. What happened to the hospital? The goodwill ran out. <laughs> the staff left and the place was shut down. It's long gone by now. Um, is there a way to make a little money around here? Here? For you? No, officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks tried hiding from their women and then forgot about. She lets out a dry chortle. All right, there's another topic I'd like to address. She nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. Uh, what's further down the coast? Not much. There's the abandoned church, the Dolorian Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. Why is it abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. She smiles a gap-toothed smile and smells the air. So, they don't hold services there anymore? The Ecclesiastes? No, we've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. I heard there might be a cult here. Where did I hear that from? Uh, what else is down the coast? Before you get to the church, there's some ruins. An apartment complex, 
or some kind of electrical plant. Rundown bunch of houses. Empty. Hmm, anything else of note? Of note? The old fish market up on the boardwalk. But it's closed. That's it? There's gotta be more along the coast. Who'd want to come to a fish market here? That's true, that's probably why it closed. Um, there's gotta be something else. What? You're one of those real estate people with big plans? If you want a development opportunity, you can check out the abandoned building over at Lens End. No, but it's like, we need to get markers. Used to be a supply depot, we think. Sending goods and ammo across the bay. It's jammed shut, though. We tried to get in, see if there was anything to sell or scavenge, but it's impossible. And now you know everything there is to know about this coast. She drops a bar of soap into the bucket with a splash. Uh, tell me about yourself. Who exactly are you? Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. Nice to meet you, Isabel Sadie. Now it's your turn, <coughs> Mr... I lost my name. These things happen occasionally. Don't worry. You'll find yourself once more. Okay, goodbye, Moth. Well, I didn't want to intimidate her with my name and rank, so... What's this? Street sign is illegible from the graffito. Okay, let's just check this shack to see if there's anything. What's this? Inside you hear the cozy sound of a heater sputtering. The door has seen better days. The layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. Let's unlock it and see what's inside. I'll wait outside to give you some time and privacy to check out your new living arrangement and look for any signs of Ruby. But just so you know, after we are done with the day, I'll still be staying in the whirling in rags for the night. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. I see. The key turns with a satisfying click. You can enter the shack now. Okay. Let's just see what's in here. We'll probably, we can, oh! You know what, this is, is not yeah, it's still better than the <laughs> than the in room that I just trashed. Much nicer too. What's this? A coat. Nice. An old mirror hangs on the wall. Ah. You see the reflection of your face in it, adorned with the expression. Another mirror. We don't need that. You see the waves, the sea, a church. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. And she's shaving the right call. The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red, hair unkempt, wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. You'll be looking like a pansy without the chops. A fucking pansy. I agree. He needs this look. A fresh start looms ahead. Clean yourself up and be born anew. No. The floorboards creak under your step. That's not too bad. Old science fiction magazines. Books are about bird watching from 39. As you look at the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. Let's check it out. The edge of a floorboard next to it looks scratched. Move it aside. Hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. Uh, what's in here? Nothing particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand though. Uh, let's search through the sand and sawdust. You stick your hand in and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside fine dust and then something hard wrapped in paper what is it a small cylindrical object you pull it out a bullet a bullet a nine millimeter bullet to be exact fit for all muzzle loaders of that caliber wait if there's a bullet here is there a gun somewhere nearby 
Interesting. The floorboard doesn't care. But maybe the washerwoman does. You have enough to confront her with. Mm. It's extra ammunition. She's locked and loaded, ready to fight some cops. Bullet. Oh, this is the tape for <laughs> the thing that we're going to be using bullets. You got one bullet. I don't think we interacted with the tape. Let's see. The porter reel is just what you needed. The reels attached to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. Play it. You press the large button marked Commence and the tape starts spinning. There's a small delay before the song starts playing. Press your ear against the speaker. Keep the porter reel at the harmless distance and wait. Yeah, let's listen to it. It sounds like someone's moving in the room, getting comfortable. Then the organ starts playing a simple, melancholic tune, echoing in the hallway. A lone singing voice joins in, telling you about the tiniest church in Sessongs, surrounded by even tinier yard. You almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's mega sad. Mega sad. Within seconds you know <laughs> this is the one. The real shit you've been looking for. The one you trust your room to. This one tells it like it is. This is your tune. Got it. A click, then silence for a bit. Then the tape stops spinning. Could I sing this for karaoke? I think I could. No, I couldn't. It's too sad. I might cry and trash the room again. Scratch that, I'm already crying and I look dumb and old. Could I sing this for karaoke? Of course you could sing this. You could take sad to a whole new level with this. <laughs> And you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it, like, a million times. Yup, they're all here. All three verses. And the B-side of the tape contains the instrumental version. It's like the world itself is telling you to do it. Only one obstacle stands on your way. What is it? Gart. Uh. You have to convince Gart to let you sing karaoke in the whirling. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. I see. That's what that's about. This intricate heat engine hums quietly, giving out pleasant warmth. Really, it's not a bad place compared to the inn. The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. No time to rest yet. But it is a nice place, so we'll be using this. And it's free! Much better than the thing I trashed. Alright. Bullet, old lady. Do you know anything about Bullet? Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Why was there a bullet under the floorboards of your shack? Damn that girl. Ruby was here. And without anger, a long and harsh life has taught her not to buckle under pressure. But it? The lieutenant turns to you and gives you a little nod, then turns to the washerwoman. You didn't put it there, did you? She did. Mm-hmm. Gone and hid things in there? She's usually a good tenant, and not a stupid one either. You rented the room to her? Yes. I let my room to that ruby girl. She speaks slowly, wringing out a rag after a long silence. Her hands move into the water bucket. Some water sloshes over the edge. As I've done before when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude. I've made it clear. We welcome all kinds of people here. That's fine, but we just wanted to find her. When was this? She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? Her wrinkled hand needs a blue rag in the water. Well... That's for the police to find out. Right there. Please answer each question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we have a few. The lieutenant takes out his familiar blue notebook. You said she left on Monday. Yes, early with the dogs. Around 8 o'clock, I think. She has dogs. She probably heard the lieutenant's Kanema drive by, and it woke her up. Just like it did you. 
Kim, she must have heard your kinema. Yes. That is a downside of having a 130 kilowatt engine. It lets the bad guys know when you are coming. <laughs> His voice is tinged with pride. <laughs> Honestly. Is the room exactly as she left it? I cleaned it. Like I always do. Was there anything else? No. The truth, sire. What is she like, Ruby? She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation. So I really appreciate that about her. Understandable. She rubs her cold hands together. Did she talk to you much during her last day? No, she was mostly silent this time. Kept to herself. What do you mean? She tried not to let it show. But I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cast a few lines. But this time she mostly stayed in her room. Why do you think she left the bullet there? How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. She looks back toward her shack, thinking. Did she have any technical equipment uh, with her, like a radio? Not that I knew of, though she was into nice music. <laughs> she once showed me a few mixtape milieu she'd made. She brushes her forehead with the back of her hand. Water drips to the ground. Although I guess she was pretty handy with the mechanical and technical stuff. Even fixed the heater in the shack. Oh. You should be thankful for that. Thank you, Ruby, for fixing the heater. Where'd she go? I don't know. Further up the coast. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. <laughs> Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots, heading up north. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. Good, at least she's not going to be running away that easily. You'll never find her, you know. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. But you told me a lot of places. Unless you're keeping one secret. Her tone is without malice, though. I wouldn't worry about that, man. We are persistent. Further up the coast we go, then. But that place is huge. She's a needle in a haystack. Wipe your brow. Man, I was really hoping she'd be hiding in this village. Nah, that'd be too easy. Are you sure she didn't go somewhere more pleasant and less wet? Further up the coast, then. Are you sure you would rather stay here? Get a nice cozy fire going in the heater? Seems like a better idea to me. She drops the rag into the bucket. It's clean now. No, you can do it. You still have plenty of juice in you before you drop. Behind the cinder block houses, old pre-war ruins rise to the sky like dark palaces. The wind calls. Wait, do we have any more questions about Ruby? What more do you want to know about that poor girl? I guess I got nothing. Yes, let's hear those other questions. One thing, officer. If you do find her, please go easy on her. She looks around. The air is getting colder. She's a good girl. Whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. I wonder. I need to hear her story. Wait, this one's not voiced. Okay, so I will voice this. And the little guy gets smaller and smaller as you rise above the dollhouse world. You see him out in the snow, on the streets, in the shop on the corner, and finally, in a matchbox house. Sitting by the window, white flowers on the windowsill. You can smell them from up here. It's awful. A white morning, a modern death, divorce, or something similar. All you can do is put more distance between you and him, make him smaller, make him less you. What? 20% zoom out distance, all motorics <laughs> learning cap raised by one. I don't know if I need to zoom out more. What does that actually do for me? I guess it helps me figure out. Alice Vuzen. 
Is this, is this like a restaurant or used to be a restaurant? Hold up. Open stuff. Let's check this. Construction material. Whoever planned to build this house left in a hurry. More money. What's this thing? Stuff. We'll take that. Let's just go through here first. I'm kind of curious about this shack. A wedding stone. Well worn and covered in rust. White curtains have been drawn shut. No looking in. Can we make it in somehow? Is this someone's house? Pants! Plus one to Kingdom of Conscience. Why would I want this? Hold on, what, what do my current pants do? Minus one savoir faire. But it gives one electrochemistry. Uh, what if I change my pants? Kingdom of Conscience. Logic. Looking pretty snazzy there, Mr. Logic. Hmm, I wonder if the... let's change the jacket. What else is my minus one sad affair here? The shoes, but I kind of want the composure, so... But perception may not be a bad one to replace for composure. Ah, uh, not like I use composure to begin with. All right, snazzy boots, not too bad. Glasses, we either lose one authority or we lose one logic, but gain a little bit of empathy. Mm. I think our authority does not need to be beaten down anymore, so. <laughs> a little bit of extra empathy, what does that bring it up to? Four. That's not bad. Mmm. These are some wonderfully regular pants. <laughs> not too tight, not too loose, moderate in every sense. You'll blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. I like regular normal things. Oops, it's a fashion f uh fox pass. Fox pass. Discard the thought in the pants. <laughs> no. I like regular normal things. Mm-hmm. I know you do. These inter-isolari pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call the moral intern on you like this, that's for sure. Okay. You're a little more moralist now, buddy. A little more normal, even if you didn't want to be. Is that supposed to be a dig at me? You see dust-covered linens, dried tulips on a bed. Okay. Guess we'll... Oh, what's this? Sounds of life in the north. Washboard scrubs filth from fabric. We've been here. This is where we came from. How come I didn't see this shack early? Oh, that's probably because I went through the coast. That's why. Right. Bricks. Cinder blocks. Charred. A makeshift pirate, uh, fire pit with magazines for lighting. A bench. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Yeah, a little hard. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Right. You can revisit the bench. If okay, what else is down here? Oh, there are the drunks. Bushes too thick and thorny to pass through. Okay, let me... Let me grab uh, the cash. Wait, can I... How can I get through here? Ah, all the way around. I see. Okay, before we talk to those guys, let's talk to the kids. Hopefully they're better than Kuno. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. I see. The other one looks indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. You must be uh, Lu Yen's twins. This one doesn't say anything, kicking the concrete with his worn-out sneaker. Lily's our mom. Explains the other one, tongue still lolling out of his mouth. 
I already said that. The stone kicker laughs suddenly. His head is too large for his shoulders. The other one laughs as well. Wow, so intellectually stimulating. I mean, they're kids. What are you going to do? The stone kicking isn't even of very high caliber. Anyone can do that. Mm. Kids, have you seen any bad people around here? What bad people? One of the twins looks up, his mouth slightly open. I don't think questioning four-year-olds with their parents present is going to crack the case. <laughs> uh, all right. I mean, it, I kind of want those balls. I, 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 need, I want one of those balls, though. And bye, kids. Take care. All right. Well, that was maybe worth a shot. Maybe not. A flower th uh, th thraw where nothing really grows. Maybe in spring. Hard to see details. The colors all warm and welcoming. Cozy, though. Whose door is this? Oh, we're actually going in. Didn't think I was going to be going inside. Who are you? Hello, mister. Little Lily. A young girl, barely four or five years old, sits on the sofa. She is looking at you with a frank curiosity. Nice little place you got here. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Uh, do you know anyone named Ruby? La Luby. Ra. Ra Luby. Suddenly, the girl gets all serious and leans in, as if she's telling you a secret. My mom tells me I'm a big girl, but she doesn't know that I can't say Earl. Or well, like, <laughs> sometimes I can, but then, oh. Uh. Okay. Kids. Come on, Kim. Don't worry about it. Are you Lillian's daughter? Yes! I am! Little ah. Lily. You know my mom? Yeah, we met each other. That's nice. My mom is great. She's never angry or anything. She's a pretty nice lady, I, I have to admit. Are the twins outside your brothers? Yes. <laughs> they don't want to play with me. They're older and play outside. Oh, they're older? I couldn't tell. They look the same. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell them apart. I guess they do look alike. <laughs> Lammy tells them apart. Lammy? Who's Lammy? Uh, she waves her fuzzy doll in the air. Oh, it's a doll. What's that? Point at the stuffed bird hanging from the ceiling. It's a grouse! She yelps, smiling broadly. Oh. You might be able to get on Gart's good side if you replace the broker skewer you almost certainly broke. Mm, can I have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. Sure. Just oh, go wow. and get it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. Are you sure your mom's not going to miss it? All right. You just need to grab it from the ceiling and go. What's the thing you're holding? It's Lammy. He's my friend. So, like... She holds the fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Lambie is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. I see. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. I mean, it's a comfort uh, stuffed animal. L uh, let's see, Lambie looks like he's falling apart. Nah. Lambie looks soft. Okay, well, pleased to meet you, Lambie. Lambie looks soft. Yes. Very soft. Suddenly, she pushes the stuffed animal towards your face. Press your cheek against Lammy. I don't deserve it. I'm scum. Mm. I don't deserve it. Press your damn cheek against Lammy, okay? <laughs> what? Him? The lieutenant sounds authoritative and surprisingly gruff. Okay, I will press my cheek against Lammy. <laughs> Okay. Isn't he soft? Ah. <laughs> okay, goodbye then. Well, Kim, I didn't think you felt so strongly about that. Bye! The girl's large, curious eyes remain fixed on you. Well, then. Let me see if I can grab this. Oh, that was easy. It sells for 13? I could sell that and get some cash. Well, at least I don't have to worry about cash anymore, but still. Industrial coal pellets burn with an orange glow. Take the bird to guard, ask about Ruby. 
Okay. So I'm guessing she was just there for morale support. I see. Well, nothing here. Ooh, bottle. Let me check around here really quick, folks, and I'll get to you. 74 cents. You're not gonna miss that. All right, can we talk to you, folks? Grumbles an unshaven man with a ruddy nose. He narrows his eyes at you as if in recognition, then turns his head away. The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is strong and familiar. Probably drank with you, huh? Don't you call her? Yeah! Don't call Abigail! Uh, who's Abigail? Uh-huh. Abigail. Don't you fucking call Abigail. He draws out a disgusting snort, then mumbles, waving a finger in your general direction. You're not going to get anything out of this guy. He's too drunk. Yeah, I can tell. Never thought you'd see such a thing in your life. But this guy's a little too drunk. Have you seen any women around here uh, lately? Who are you? What's your name? Okay, maybe wait until he's sober. Okay, let's walk away from now. Oh, go. He whimpers softly, his voice trailing off into nothingness. Alright. How about you two? Do you know anything? Hey, tequila! Idiot Doom Spiral. I guess he recognizes me. A 30-something man clad in two-piece lycra. Trademark. Tracksuits puts down his pilsner and extends his hand in greeting. Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation <laughs> treating you? Okay, he... we have... Matt, shake his hand. So what's happening? Uh, I guess let's play it cool. He picks up his beer. Tequila. Wait, tequila? Well, nice meeting you, but I gotta go. What about tequila? Yeah, Tequila Sunset. How are the, um, high-concept, reality-based adventures proceeding? What are you talking about? He takes a sip. He says it like it's obviously your name. Like you call someone Billy Brunel or leader of the 4th Street Gang. Uh, not too hot. I'm, a 40, I'm on a 42-year losing streak. Reality, it makes me aggressively sad. I don't know. People tell me I'm a cop. I'm getting used to it. Uh, have re-entered reality to conquer it, to bend it to my will. I am the law. Not too hot. I'm on a 42-year losing streak. That's harsh. I'm like three or maybe four <laughs> years into mine. Wait, no. Make it five. He looks at his shit-stained licra with a grim expression. Things aren't going super well for idiot Doom Spiral either. Hmm. Haven't found those keys yet. <laughs> Haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word <laughs> from my business buddies. He takes a sip from his beer. Have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around here? Can't really remember seeing any women after losing my keys. Okay. It's a touchy topic. He hasn't got laid in ages. Okay, that's fine. He really has no idea who this Ruby is, sire. Uh, what do you guys do around here besides drink? We are saving the world. From what? Please! Please don't call! Don't call! Begs the man in the pipe. Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once, a long time ago, with enterprise, creativity, and willpower. But that didn't work out. Okay. So now, it's a pirate's life for me. What is a tequila sunset? You keep saying it. It's you. Your tequila sunset. How do you know this? We've met before. Don't you remember? No, you sure don't. Maybe? Maybe. You look like you want to know how tequila sunset came to be. You look like you want to hear... The tale. He takes a sip from his beer. Go ahead. I want to hear. Mm hmm. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And by Tequila Sunset, I mean you. The man. The myth. 
He takes a sip and begins. Uh, wait, did we meet on Friday? Was I alone? Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. Okay, fine. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Yep, that's what I heard. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer, and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept if you ask me. Okay, so we've done this before. Oh yeah, that's totally your style. The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. Okay, not the first time this comes up. <laughs> hey, man, I'm not judging. This life's a valley of woes. Some of the highest concept people in history have killed themselves. And been drunks. He waves the bottle towards you. Either way, it was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Marabond Alcoholics, got our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this. We get our drink on 24-7. Mm -hmm. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking? The billboard? I'm guessing that was me too. Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Uh, I want to get off the story train right now, naturally. Anyway, <laughs> there was a brief silence. A gasp of silence, if you will followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. Mm -hmm. Sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. <laughs> what we saw was a sight to behold. A beat-up police carriage containing you. Right there on the beach, you revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. The time hath come! Okay. So, naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come. To which you replied, The time hath come <laughs> for tequila sunset! The end of all things! Oh god, what happened next? Say nothing, it's more dignified that way. <laughs> Every word I said was true. Tequila Sunset will break the looms of reality. Ah, uh, say nothing. After which, your reality contracted. You jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty, and through the ice. Uh huh? Your hands cramp on the steering levers. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit. Like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. Oh, well, we got it back. In this way, you and your motor carriage have a lot in common. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally <laughs> agreed to. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and <laughs> insisted that we all call you that from then on. Wait, so is tequila sunset an event or a name? Tequila sunset, huh? Sounds pretty good. My real name is Harry. Nah, let's go with tequila sunset. It's, pre it's pretty good. Yeah, I agree. How long did we party for? Hours. It was an all-night drinkathon. Then, at some point... I think it was Sunday morning. You got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revacholian women. Uh, my wife. How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. <laughs> How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up and left without saying anything. Wow. That's quite a story. Quite. Yeah. I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. Are you, Kim? Are you proud of me? If you only knew. <laughs> Did I tell you anything specific about this person that fucked me? Did I mention losing anything else? Okay, let's start with the top. Did I mention anything specific? You were pretty vague about it, 
But you kept saying you got fucked real hard, and that we've all been fucked too. Hmm. No one's fucked me. I do the fucking around here. Sure, sir. Sure. Rosemary? That's your name? Oh, come on. Abigail. It seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. That would be true, yes. Did I mention losing anything else? Beside your gun and your badge? You said something about your hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. So is my... So, so are my memories, that's what I'm asking. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too? That's a big one. Yeah, did I say anything about my colleagues? You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers whose main interest was cramping your style. Okay. It's more like you were cramping theirs. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You <laughs> were the star of the show. Did I say anything about the case? Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. I see. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. Yes. It's not meant as a joke. <laughs> He's sorry for the hermit cop. No, uh, we didn't do the hermit cop route, so... Uh... Did we talk about politics? Yeah, you said that you'd really behaved unreasonably and failed to uphold your responsibilities as a representative of the coalition. Did you get a read on what kind of cop I was? You kept apologizing for being such a bad cop and for the damage you've inflicted on everyone around you. Okay, so I'm a sorry cop. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your <laughs> hand against your temples, saying, stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay, well, I don't need to hear any more. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. <laughs> well, you were quite, uh, willing to, like, expose my past. You seem like you're characterized by your storytelling ability. Want to tell me another one sometime? whoop de doo So now I'm a fucking storyteller. Right. Why not? Better than a beach bum. True. Uh... Wanna tell me how you became Idiot Doom Spiral? It depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? To find your keys? We'll try. The gleam in his eyes and the slout in his posture is so incredibly familiar. You might get scammed here. Hmm, I have a feeling this is gonna cost me a lot. No, the reality of the situation requires a rather modest contribution. A little... motivational package. You want booze, don't you? I don't want it, man. I need it. Can't tell stories without it. Dry stories are boring, you see? Okay. I mean, I'll give you my Commodore Red. I'm not gonna be drinking it. So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? A bottle for a story. Seems fair to me. Let's see. Don't have any on me right now. Don't want to give you any alcohol. I got some sweet Commodore Red. You want it? Classy. He snatches the bottle and pushes the cork in through the bottleneck. Hey, Spiral Boy! You gonna share that? <laughs> One of the other bombs interjects. Don't call Abigail! Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Something happened to you. Something happened to me, too. My actual name is George. But around here, you already know. Yeah, I, th I think Idiot Doom Spiral is suits you much better than George. I was once a reasonably high net worth individual. <laughs> a founder slash junior partner at a high concept creative services agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance firm. Go on. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I called a cultural incubator. Abstract value generation, value per person, high concept stuff. Okay. I developed the paradigm, worked within the paradigm, but the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me. So I went jogging every so often to keep myself sane. 
<sighs> How many people did you have working for you? I don't think he wants to tell us that. Did the jogging help? It did. With my trusty Sansarik tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. I see, so these tracksuits are expensive. But now dreams are worn thin, much like my tracksuit. He says thoughtfully, brushing dust off his shit-stained pants. What happened? One day I left on my evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sound of keys jangling in your pockets. He shakes the bottle and makes a ringing sound. His eyes are clouded. His dilated blood vessels encircle in his irises like stinging brambles. His eyes are your eyes. Mm. So I removed the key ring and put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets to stop the jangling, you see? At least, that was the plan. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. The reality situation became very wet, very quickly. Go on. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox, which was useless. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my ass. Okay, that explains the stain. Uh, I would have landed on my feet. I've got feline reflexes. Ouch. Ouch. Ouch, indeed. <laughs> Reality was looking rather grim just then. Me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower. But when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard. Standing in front of my apartment door, fumbling with my pockets, I realized that I'd also forgotten my apartment key. Okay, so what happened next? I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Those who did assumed I was trying to sell them something and hung up before I could even explain the situation. Hmm. People are naturally wary of ad men, you see? One moment someone chats you up, five minutes later you've bought a box of edible lingerie and a <laughs> strap-on. I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be... One of the best. He pauses meaningfully. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could wait out the storm there. But when I reached my office, I remembered that I'd asked one of my producers to change the locks that day. And since I hired only the best, he'd already done it, and I couldn't get in. Well, that is some luck. Anyway, long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years, and my girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company... well, you see where I'm going with this. All because you lost some keys? That's... that's rough, dude. So, now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Like nothing you've ever heard, huh? He takes a long swig of his drink. What, is that it? I feel like there are some steps missing. I'm almost homeless myself. Doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> Look on the bright side. You got one hell of a story. You do realize all this is your own fault. Yes, that's why he's an idiot death spiral. I literally can't believe it. Me neither, Tequila. When I lost my keys, I lost more than access to my apartment. I also lost my leverage over humanity. I wasn't a high-concept creative director anymore. I was just some homeless asshole with a premium Sansarik Lycra tracksuit. I see. <laughs> you can't imagine what that does to a man's confidence. Anyway, that was all the story one bottle gets you. Almost empty, this one. He turns his eye to the bottle. I mean, dude, that's like... Very unfortunate. <laughs> I, I feel sorry for you, dude, and... <gasps> Why do you keep losing all your stuff? Why? Good fucking question, Tequila. If I knew the answer, you think I'd be hanging out on a beach in this formerly premium, but now extremely dirty, two-piece Lycra tracksuit? I used to own my reality situation. 
My business buddies and I had our own creative services agency. I had a nice apartment, an even nicer piece of ass. <laughs> but somehow it all got away from me. Now I can't hang on to anything. Just last week I stole this nice new jacket. But then I lost it too. The only things I haven't lost are these two drunks. Yeah, you might want to lose them soon. You of all people should empathize with this. Perhaps this lost jacket is something you could help with? What was the name of your agency? My agency. Man. The Boom Boom Room. Our concept was combining <laughs> high art with the lowest forms of marketing. The color red, breasts, and oil painting. Okay. I convinced my partners to reinvest some of our profits in an even more high-concept cultural incubator called Thin Air. The artists were happy, the clients were happy. I was financing a group of poets in East Rebishal who were developing a new universal poetic language. But then it all went to shit. He looks towards the bay. If it sounds like it makes no sense, that's because it doesn't. Yeah, it kind of sounds like one of those, um... Jeez. Ah, it's not really a scam, but it ends up being a scam because people with these lofty ideas think it's going to work and... They kind of really gaslight themselves into thinking it's going to work and it doesn't. And you know what happens after that. Mixing oil painting and breasts do make ads. To make ads isn't high art, it's just cynical wankery. That's so high concept, I have no idea what it means. Uh, man, mixing high and low, commodifying culture, that's extremely my shit. Right, okay, never mind I asked. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of cynical wankery. Well, you know, sex sells. That's the first rule of advertising. You're not wrong. Maybe, but it's still tired. Maybe, but it's still tired. Yeah, you're actually right. Let the market sort it out. No need for me to regulate the stuff. Eh, it's still tired. Maybe you're right. Who knows? Maybe we were behind the curve? We were fucking rich, though. That much I know. Uh, what about the other drunks? Do you know about them? My fellow members of the Union of Moribund Alcoholics? They're exactly what they look like. Gotcha. Hey, tequila! You want to buy some speed? I'll pass on that. Thank you, Rosemary. Shut the fuck up, Rosemary. He's a cop, remember? I thought he was a cool cop. <laughs> Don't call up a guy. And this is Abs. So yeah, that's basically us. We drink together. Okay, so the only thing you got in common is drinking. That's it. Uh, what about this uh, lost tra jacket? Tequila... It's a verifiable tragedy. It was practically brand new. Sure, it didn't really go with my Lycra threads, but it did itch a lot less. Say, you're a detective, right? Maybe you can help old Doom spiral out. Solve the case of the missing jacket. What do you say, Tequila? Wait, you're asking a police officer to help find a jacket you stole and then lost? Yeah, exactly. You're here to serve, right? I really don't think this is something I should be getting involved with. I don't have time for this. Man, I thought you said you were a cool cop. Yeah, but you stole it. What's up with the tracksuit? What? You've never seen 100% Lycra before? Go on, feel that primo material. Is it still Primo? You said it was not Primo anymore. You really shouldn't touch it. Eh, uh, I'll just admire it from afar, thank you. That might be the right idea. This here is one of the last of its kind. Should probably be in a museum, honestly. Can't get it anymore. It was too Primo, even for Grad. By Primo, he means possibly carcinogenic. Lycra, TM, was a synthetic fabric developed by manufacturers in the middle 40s. Notable mainly for the swishy sound it makes as the wearer passes by. It's also known to become extremely itchy if not properly cared for. Which he is extremely itchy right now, I see. Wow, you're lucky. 
He never lets me feel it. <laughs> That's because your paws are fucking filthy, Rosemary. We're right next to the bay. You could wash them any time. Let me ask you something else. I'm all ears, Tequila. Uh, be seeing you. You too, Tequila Sunset. Okay, a little information on ourselves, but nothing much else. Interesting group of folks, though. There's a barrel here. I don't know where I am. Oh, what's this? A little black swallow circles above you. You hear it chirp. And I got a point from that. We got five points now. Don't know what I'll use it for. Yeah, I'll give that to guard later tonight. Let's see. Oh, there's some cash here. How do I get around? What's this? Rust eaten letters, Mazot. Anything else here? Nope. Looks like there's something on the end. Dirty water? Looking back at you from the rust-colored water. You. Just my reflection. Gotcha. Gotcha. Rear tire of a motor carriage adorned these reeds. My motor carriage? Cash money. Not a whole lot of cash on this side. The water runs from the west, the source is upstream. A broken pipe. Hmm. What else is around here? Oh, what's this? There's a slit in the concrete here. A sewer? Alright, there might be a sewer. Quick travel, church. Let's not go in there just yet. Kick, drum, pulse. The music is coming from somewhere on the ice. Kick drum. A kick drum? What's a kick drum? School of fish huddled around the fence post, then scatter into the dark. Wait, what's that? Before you, a drawbridge. It can only be lowered from the other side. Not a, not a very big one, either. Full of holes. Could the post hide treasure from inside? Oh, there is treasure in the form of potent pilsner and cash money, more cash money, more cash money, cash, medicine, wow, just so much stuff here. I think I heard a thought pop up, but I want to see if there's anything else. Cash! So we can't get there without lowering it, and to lower it we have to be on the other side. So we found a church. Uh, there's something else further up, but we're not going to go there just yet. This is a church. The light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. What's in there? Maybe it's just a storm drain for the sewer. Kim, any idea what's down there? No idea. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. Think we might find Ruby down there? We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Revachol sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. In conclusion, she could be under any building. But not in there. <sighs> I hope not. Okay, we're not going to yell, because that would alert her. And I feel you, Kim. I don't want to go down under sewers, either. But we may have to. Oh, there's a person there. A man and a kid. We'll check that out later. I'm kind of curious about this building. If there's a way across. There does not seem to be a way across. I don't know. We can go th No. How do we... Ow. Is there a back door? 
Let's see if we can get into here from the front, or whatever that is. Oh, hey! It's you guys, right? Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gem. You... I wasn't expecting you to look like the way you do. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. Very gruff. Is that the police? Why are the police here? What's that thing behind his head? Gr Gary, the crypto-fascist. Crypto-fascist, what? Don't worry, Gary! <laughs> I'll handle it! You must be Moral, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? Your wife. That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. Uh, Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back. Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. Yeah, that was me. I broke the water lock with my motor carriage, but it's fixed now. You can go back. The water lock's been fixed. It was fine when I crossed it. Withhold the whole story. Withhold the whole story. Oh, good. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, I did. Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Got it. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. He refastens a bit of netting that has come loose in the wind. I'm looking for a suspect. Have you seen a woman with red hair who seemed to be on the run? I guess he only cares about phasmids, but let's just make sure. I'm afraid not, officer. I've been busy digging around in the reeds for days, looking for signs of insect activity. I'm less interested in mammalian concerns, to be perfectly honest. Fair. The lieutenant takes a short note in his notebook, then gestures for you to proceed. Tell me about the phasmid you're looking for. Hmm. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. What makes it so difficult? Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect. It disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? Uh, I guess, kind of? It's kind of sparse, if you ask me. And I suspect it may have also developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators, or scientists, in our present case. Mmm, how big is it? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm. So, uh... He leaves the conclusion to you. If it's as big as a forearm, how the heck have you not spotted it by now? Seems puny, to be honest. I don't know, a forearm's kind of big. Uh, why are you so interested in this stick bug? There's... Aren't there more sensational animals out there? Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. He flashes you a sideways smile. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, <laughs> of any, cryptozoology's career. But to study it and its defenses, find out how it stayed hidden so long, he shakes his head. Would be glory itself. Uh, what sorts of specialized techniques is the phasmid using to hide itself? It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. Mm. But I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolve without studying a live specimen. What have you discovered about it so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. 
No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. So no one's ever found one? Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, <laughs> if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? Mm. I know it's real. The cryptozoologist says brusquely enough that even he seems taken aback by it. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. He says gathering himself. Luna said there has been a sighting here in Martinez. Maybe the insulidian phasmid has died out? Uh, Lena said there was a sighting. Yes. The most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species. But with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Maybe it died out. I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. Oh my gosh, parthenogenesis, a stick bug? Are you serious? He shakes his head vigorously. I'm, I'm, I'm shaking my head very vigorously right now. I, I don't think it's real. Um. Got it. Parthenosis. Parthenogenesis? Yes. The females don't need males to reproduce. Makes it easier for a species to survive in adverse conditions. Let's see. Females rep reproducing without males. A travesty. A crime against passion and common sense. <laughs> this arouses no special feelings in me. That's pretty clever. Uh... Clever. Yes, the Insulindian phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, I try my best to remain dispassionate. Tell me more about the traps. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly, so I'm sure they'll do the trick. Sure, he points to the cage of mesh and wiring around the ground. Uh, Lena designed the traps? Yes. He says with some pride. How do the traps work? Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can't get back out. The mesh, though, looks like it has a lot of holes. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution. But we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. What are you using as bait? Yes. Oh. What? And I'm eager. Wait, My wait, wait, wife wait, wait, wait. understands that just as well as anyone. Uh, eager to return to her? I assume you. I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish uh, with these traps. Okay. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. He yells in response. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. <laughs> we'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Won't let Lena down? Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the phasmid somehow. I didn't know the phasma was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only four this century, and it's hers. Really? She sighted the phasma? She didn't tell me that. Yes. That's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> He coughs, then continues. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. 
I can't abandon course now. Another cough into his fist this time. Maybe you could go back to the whirling warm-up, come back to check the traps later. You should just give up on this bug hunt. Okay, I understand. A good, don't, I don't give up on things either. Yeah, warm up a bit. You sound a little bit sick. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the Phasmid were to starve while we were sitting tea at the hostel? He's dead set on this. Mm. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. Let's see, let's... Uh, well, what are you using? not look impressive. Let's see. But locusts. Bait, bait. Nearly all known Phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. A meat-eating stick insect? Does it pretend to be the reeds as part of its ambush behavior? This seems unlikely. A carnivorous stick insect? Seems unlikely. Thank you for your opinion. We have also included plant material in the traps to satiate your skepticism. What will you do if these traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Sure. Yes. What? What if the, we check the traps for you? I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Ah, uh, well, I just kind of want you to go back to your wife, really. That's all that is. Uh, he looks at you with obvious surprise. Crypt cryptozoology and detective work are very similar. Chaos is my method. I am its scion. We're looking for someone hiding in this very coast. Looking for another thing may lead us to her. I'm all in with this cryptid shit. I'm hooked. Uh, we're looking for someone hiding this coast. Looking for another thing may lead us to her. Why not? At least it will give us the excuse to look into a lot of reeds. <laughs> that it will. That it absolutely will. I hope you brought your good boots. I got boots. The man cracks an unwieldy smile. Uh, where are these traps? There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula, by the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower, after the church. Okay. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them... He gestures on the to the trap in front of him. You should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. What do I do if there's a phasma in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the find. But he's lying about this even to himself. I mean, I don't care. We're just here to help you. What if I encounter the fast man in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. What? He takes a small white spray can. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the sight of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. Lay it on me. Lay on me thick. Present your armpit. I don't want this, thank you very much. Uh, lay it on me. Wise choice. He douses you with the odd smelling spray and he gives you a satisfied nod. This is the smell of dying reeds, of longing crumbling into the water. That's not too bad. I hope you're not buying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. <laughs> It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. He looks at the lieutenant with disdain, then puts the spray back in his pocket. Okay, let's go. Right. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, 
It's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. Finally, someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. If it's more cryptid-related business you want to discuss, you'll have time for that later, too. Gotcha. But what if the information is vital on the hunt? Mm, I think I already got all the information. I don't really care how he became a cryptozoologist, so I'll just get going. Okay. Well, uh, let's talk to this guy first really quick, and then we'll see what we, what we do afterwards. Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. Yeah, Gary. Yellow man. I mean, officer. Okay. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. Interesting. This is something to ask him about after a little probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. He quickly changes the subject. Not a lover of the great outdoors. I am... I'm more of a city boy myself. Not a lover of the great outdoors. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Sadly, I think I might be a drunk or a degenerate. Maybe even both. <laughs> Ah, uh, drunks and degenerates, that's my crew. Nobody's perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink. Oh, I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Revacall. Uh, his gaze shifts to a pile of soggy logs at his feet. He pronounces Revacall with a hard K, unlike other people. Uh, let's see, you said Revacall? I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. He nods solemnly. He winks at you, trying to relay some hidden message, inviting you to mispronounce it too, perhaps. It's odd. Very odd. It's a secret right. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. Uh, do you know anything about the man hanging behind the whirling in rags? Let's start with there. Oh, so that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great. Great to hear someone's finally taken care of that. He nods in sincere approval. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. Okay. Well, thought you might actually have something. He shakes his head empathetically, then corrects his tie. He didn't kill him or anything, but there's something going on here. You think so, Drama? Uh, is this your mug? Hold up the yellow man mug. My mug? W why would you think that? You sound suspicious. You said yellow man. That's not something many people around here say. It seems as if you were calling it longingly when you cried yellow man. I can see you recognize it. It's in your eyes. You look like the kind of guy who might have a collection of mugs like this. Home in in his colonial mug collection. Uh... You look like you might have a collection of mugs. How do you mean? Forgive me, officer, but we've only just met. Yes. He is trying to avoid lying to you outright, in case you really have been to his apartment. Is that his? He's trying not to look afraid, because that would be incriminating. Yet, he is. Ah, uh, you're acting kind of suspicious. Did I mention the mug was found at the scene of the lynching? All right, I believe you. You look like the kind of man who knows it's a crime to lie to an officer. Eh, uh, you look suspicious. Okay, okay, I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. Well, we don't care about that part. You're not going to find me, are you? I would, but I don't know how. How do I find someone, Kim? Nah, Gary just want... Nah, Gary, I just want information. Whew. Thank you. You won't regret this. 
I won't use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. Okay. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Oh, no. <laughs> Morel, don't get into this. Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. Here we go. Start pumping that sweet info. How did you get into the tr trash container? That thing was shut tight. I know a guy who works with the trash collection services. CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Really? Why would you need to get into the, everyone's trash? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Chimians run it like a mob. Okay. Uh, he bows shamefully like a fallen knight. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. I don't care about that too much. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows and looks up. Yeah, I mean, it's just trash. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Gary, did you put the clothes of a murder victim, the man who was hanged behind the whirling rags, into the trash container? Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. Do explain, please. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying and around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Okay, then what happened? Yes, yes, what happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash. Along with a broken mug, admittedly. He changes his mind mid-sentence. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Right. It was just civic duty. The lieutenant remarks drolly. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. Hmm. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks like the clinking of glass beads against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard this sound before, but where? I don't think I've heard that. Uh... Wait, you have the armor? You wouldn't know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. I, I mean, yes, of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. The sound says otherwise. An infant could see he's not telling the truth, but he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. What's a strange sound? What sound? That clinking I heard when you moved. Don't mess with me, I think you know what I'm talking about. I haven't the slightest. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash. Could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Every day, the wind shifts the reeds and whatever was left in them. Tambourines <laughs> and condom wrappers, plastic and glass bottles, the smell of decay. The sound you heard was not the sound of something easily abandoned. Let's, let's revisit that. What sound? Thinking when you moved. Really? He fans his arm out slowly, and this time his motions are soundless. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash, could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Every day, the sound you heard was not the sound of something easily abandoned. How do we get him to admit to having armor? Armor? An infant could Nothing. see he's not telling. I hope I can help your investigation in my small way. Don't be so relieved yet, Gary. This bad cop may have been in your apartment, admiring your mug collection. Perhaps a little intimidation? You were surprised to see my colleague, Kim. 
Uh, why is he shifting around like that? Analyze Gary's composure. Uh, are you a cryptozoologist too? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. You were surprised to see my colleague, Kim. Not many Seolites here, or anywhere, other than Sale. I meant no offense, truly. Uh, the lieutenant is a native of Revishaw. Oh, yes. Of course he is. I was just speaking about his... connections. Let's change the subject, okay? He flashes an impenetrable smile. Sounds like some conspiracy topic. You might be able to discuss it with him when the lieutenant isn't here. If you can remember it. Hmm. Your gut feeling tells you it'd be interesting. So, Gary, you live nearby, in an apartment in Martinez. Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. Uh, have you found your door open recently? Mr. Clare must be very angry with you. I think I broke into your apartment. Very sorry. We'll return to this later. Now, let me ask you something else. Have you found your door open recently? In my home? Yes. When I was going to... How did you know? Mr. Everard Clare thought it necessary to unlock your apartment. Nothing. I just wanted to ask if your door's been unlocked. Now I have. Uh, let's see if, uh... Bring up Everard. Gets him a little flustered. Mr. Clare unlocked my apartment? No, I did. Per his request. Don't worry, I didn't go in. Yep, yeah, I did, per his request. So you work for Everard Clare? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. What's this about? He realizes what's going on, changes his tone. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. The man looks around, whispering. He makes sure no one hears you talk. Really, I don't even know what it was about. I just opened the door. Yeah, I don't know what that what it was, but he doesn't like you. I'm trying not to shit. Try not to shit yourself, Gary. It's just an open door. Our discussion on this topic is over. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what it was, but he just doesn't like you. I was probably talking too loud in the whirling the other night about some theories. Stupid. Shouldn't have run my mouth loud like that. Okay. I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you, or the Union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. Okay. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear. Has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vein has turned. He huh. cannot be unturned. <laughs> well, good thing the weather dried up a bit. He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. Let's see. I think... Let's try it. Why is he shifting like that? Analyze Gary's composure. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. <laughs> 42%. I'm back, baby. I am back. <laughs> uh, his massive musculature? Something worn underneath. Yes. Like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other. Resembling pearls or marbles. Stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I see you're a connoisseur of high-quality combat gear. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... He unbuttons the shirt. I was ashamed of what I did. And I didn't want you to know. You see gleaming white ceramic shine underneath. A thin layer of interlocking plates covers his gaunt torso. We're not detecting falsehood, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary! What's going on? Nothing, Morale. Don't worry about it. Later, Morale. <laughs> I've got apologizing to do. 
He's got quite the conscience, though he does try to hide. No, you've got explaining to do. The lieutenant's tone is icy. Give me that armor, now. Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Why did you lie to me, Gary? Do you know who killed the hanged man? Why did you... Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Everyone was picking those pieces off him, and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. He looks at his feet. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and... I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the caress was left, so I stripped it off him. <laughs> it was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it would give you guys trouble, I, I wouldn't have... Fuck. His lips start quivering. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you are tying it up now. The lieutenant jots something down in his notebook. I'm so fucking sorry I called you yellow man. Sealite officers commanded the Suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when... He shakes his head. They were thoroughly conservative men, he realizes suddenly. Why did you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but... He says, he says staring at nothing in particular. The hell, Gary? You in trouble? <laughs> I'll explain later. He doesn't muster up the strength to yell. Give me that armor, now. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. Ew. But also, nice armor. Can we sell that? But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. Do you know who killed the hangman? I always thought it was the Union, but I sure as hell won't go around saying that anymore. You have my word. I don't know, and I won't be running my mouth on this subject anymore. Well, good news, it probably wasn't the Union. Uh, bad news. I don't know what Evar's gonna do to you. This is all he knows. Are we done here, Gary? Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. I, I won't mess with Mr. Claire either. You have my word. Okay, thank you for co your cooperation. Nice. Uh, it seems I've gotten a little bit over time today. So let me just check really quick what I just got. Oh, it's something we can equip. Minus one to empathy. But our volition and pain threshold goes up. That could be nice. Okay, so we wear it underneath. What happens if I take off the jacket? Oh! That is some really, really muscly armor. That's, that's going to be well hidden. Well hidden. Empathy, right? Minus one. Empathy at three. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. What what are my other options? Logic, physical in and physical instrumentation. That's it. I th I think this will come in handy for the upcoming possible uh, fights we might be getting into, because I feel like this area is going to be a little bit dangerous. But I think I'm going to call it uh, done for now. I'd like to continue, but. Uh, we don't really have enough time, and we, it seems like it's barely, we barely scratch the surface of the other side of the, of the channel, but, oh man, there's just so much stuff here to look at, and I didn't think time would pass by that quickly. I feel like we didn't really get that much progress, but we did get a loose end tied up, so that's good. That's good, at least. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy that. Thank you all for coming, Nuggets, and see you next time. Goodbye.